Hello and welcome to this video where we will be discussing our technique of investigation of the biological molecules sugar, starch and protein. But first things first, always make sure that you have all the safety equipment on throughout the experiments in the lab. This means your lab coat, your gloves and your goggles. The next step is to design a table where you can keep all the recordings of your observations throughout the experiment. Use a scale and a pencil to make sure that your table is tidy, neat and that all the contents are easily readable. You might want to name your sample solutions like we did here. And you also need to mention all the solutions that you're using throughout the experiment as a reference in your table. Our table ended up looking something like this. Now that you're all set and ready to go, we can begin the experiment. First off, we're testing each solution sample for the presence of starch using the iodine solution. So we take equal volumes of each sample solution and put it on the tile where we're carrying out the experiment. We then add a few drops of iodine to each sample, knowing that if starch is actually present, the sample would turn dark blue. None of our samples turn dark blue, and hence, there is no starch present. For the next investigation, we take a known volume of the solution sample, label test tubes accordingly, and then add that solution sample into a test tube. We then add a few drops of Benedict's solution to the test tube and leave the test tube in a water bath so that it can heat gently. Now this is the test for glucose and in the case of the presence of glucose we would be expecting the blue solution to turn green upon heating and then to turn brick red upon further heating, just like what we observed here. Now it is really important that throughout your experiment you record all your observations in your table. You can even determine the concentration of your glucose solution using the intensity of the color. Our sample had a concentration of 0.10% due to its brick red color. Now we know that the sample S1 is positive for glucose and hence we take the Benedict solution option. For the next investigation we take a known volume of sample solution S2 Put it in a test tube and then add 1% copper sulfate solution to the test tube along with a few drops of sodium hydroxide. What copper sulfate and hyd sodium hydroxide form is the burette solution that we all know as the test for protein presence. Upon adding this mixture of solutions, the test tube solution color turns into purple and hence S2 is positive for protein. Now we're testing sample S3 for a non-reducing sugar like a disaccharide. We take 2 cm cube of S3, put it into a test tube, add a few drops of dilute hydrochloric acid, and then we leave the test tube in a water bath to allow it to gently heat for about two to three minutes. After the two minutes are done, we add a small amount of sodium hydrogen carbonate to the test tube and then add a few drops of the Benedict solution. Now we put it back into the water bath and then we allow it to gently heat in the water bath while observing the color change that goes from blue to green to brick red. This proves that there is indeed a non-reducing sugar in this sample. We then record our observation where S3 is positive for the presence of a non-reducing sugar. 
It is very important to not make any errors or mistakes throughout the experiments, such as using different volumes of each sample or just not hating each sample for the same amount of time. To avoid such errors, you must use the same volume for each and every single sample if you want a fair test. You should also use the same volume of the testing solutions, heat the samples at the same rate, and a good way to get more accurate results is repeating the measurements more than once. And that's about it for our investigation. Now it's up to you to carry out your own investigation and see what you end up getting with your samples. Hope this helped. Thanks for watching.